Welcome everybody. This is the Life Enthusiast Online Radio and TV Network. I'm your host, Scott Patton, and joining me as usual is our other host, Martin Patella, the health coach at Life Enthusiast. Hey, Martin, how are you doing today? Hello, Scott. Hello, good people. I am uh, inspired today to try and finally create something that makes sense. Two years ago, we started this fibromyalgia support group. And I have been, and as Scott has been, reading posts. I have read thousands of posts. I have hundreds of hours of my own time in this. And to tell you, I actually am a survivor, recovered, I don't know how to put it to you, but I was really sick. You can read my story, find my link. Well, could We could say that you had chronic illness, you had a lot of pain, and there was nothing that the medical establishment could do to solve it. Right. This is a premise that you must understand. When you have a chronic inflammatory disease, it doesn't get fixed through diagnosis because diagnosis only gives you a name of a syndrome and syndrome is a code word for we can't fix it. We don't know how to fix it because there are multiple causes. The medical approach that seeks the silver bullet understands how to find a solution to a thing that is caused by one single factor. Like a broken bone, they're great at it. Gonorrhea, absolutely. Tuberculosis, easy. But when it comes to a complex problem, they're lost. And, and the, the result is, of that is, is that they continually give you drugs that I think most of the people in the group would say make things worse. Right. So to, to define it, they're exceedingly good at dealing with emergencies. If you are an emergency situation, they will save your life. They will do it competently and they'll take you back from the brink of disaster. Hey, that's me. Yep. You've been there. Yeah. My liver stopped and I was in the hospital for, for six weeks. And when I came out, I was alive. And I learned something, Martin, that I just want to share with you that I didn't know. My mom told me uh, three weeks ago that at one point they said to her, we need to find a liver and we're going to have to transplant his liver. And unfortunately, in the time that Scott has left to live, there's no way that we're going to find the right liver in time. So prepare for him to die. Exactly, yeah. right? So if well, I hit... I saw I saw the picture of you, and it was, I thought that you were going. But they saved you. Yes. Anyway, the point is this. Techniques that are excellent for uh, preventing an untimely death or to deal with an emergency are wrong for trying to prevent the situation that caused the emergency in the first place. And to give you an example, if I'm lying on the sidewalk with a cut in my arm and there's blood spurting, I'm okay with you taking a hot red iron and cauterizing that whole thing to stop the bleed. But the hot red, red hot iron is not a good way to prevent that injury. Nor is it a good way to fix an, a back pain. Right. So anyway, uh, so back pain. So, okay, so to, to, to tell you, the f posts that I have read, they all include the following themes. Number one, everybody around me thinks I'm nuts. Everybody around me thinks I'm making it up. Everybody around me is uh, treating me like a hypo hypochondriac or a cheat. They think I'm lazy. I understand that you're not. You are ill. Uh, the other thing is it's all in your head. There's part truth to this. Some of it is in your head, and it's hard to believe, and I don't want you to think for a moment that I want to blame you for it being in your head, but please accept the fact that there's a huge psychosomatic factor to the chronic inflammatory disease. Scott and I have covered this in several interviews with Dr. Michael Amendolara, and uh, interviews with Joan Kaler, 
we have tried to introduce to you the fact that some of the trouble lies buried in your subconscious mind. And it's emotional trauma, it's mental trauma, it's spiritual trauma. It, it doesn't mean that, oh, you can just say, oh, well, it's in my head, I'm fine. No, that's not what it is. I mean, if you know someone who's depressed, then you tell them, well, it's just in your head. That's not helpful at all. And so we're not suggesting that we're just saying, well, it's in your head, so get over it. It's not at all. What that means is, is that there's work that you have to do on yourself. It's, you know, personal development, healing old wounds, and, uh, and could be generational wounds, too. We talked about books by Dr. John Sarno, and uh, go find the other uh, articles. They are here in the archives. And learn the fact that you can get the stuff that's buried in your subconscious fixed. You cannot access it by talking about it or praying about it or complaining about it. It actually has to be treated with techniques that are known and proven. All right? So, that, yes, the pain is real. Yes, you're not lazy. And the, the next... you're not crazy, but you have some work to do on a physical level and on an emotional and mental level. And I, I want to say this. This whole situation of chronic inflammatory disease comes about as a confluence of a perfect storm of multiple inputs. One of them definitely is the invisible trauma. And it could be indeed the emotional injuries. And it also could be um, other invisible things like the electromagnetic influences that are all around you and things that are in the air that you cannot see but you can smell. And the weather and the electromagnetics of the planet and uh, the oncoming storm will make you worse and so on. Um, anyway, so this is the influence of the invisibles, the influence of stagnation, which means that your lymphatic system is not moving well enough. And exercise, appropriate exercise is required. No, we don't want you to try and uh, work out like a triathlete, but the less you move, the worse it gets. So that's stagnation, toxicity. We have gigantic problem. That's number one issue in this world. The industrial world is becoming more and more toxic, and it's a self-amplifying loop of more industrial production leads to more industrial toxins in the environment, which puts it in the food, which you then eat. It gets into you, and you give it to your children, and so on. It's just running in circles like that, and it's getting worse with every succeeding generation. Malnutrition. The food that we eat is substandard. It's getting worse, again, because it's grown in poor soils, toxic soils, pushed by fertilizers, and then it is denatured. So you need to find a way to get to eat foods that are as wholesome as possible, closer to what your ancestors ate 500 years ago, not 50. Finally, um, viral or other infections. The most common viral infection is Epstein-Barr, but there can be others. There's the cytomegalovirus, there's herpes, whatever. But the most common one that you will most encounter is Epstein-Barr virus and Lyme infections. We all have that. Um... So what to do about it? How do we clear it? The method that you can help yourself with is not found at the end of the prescription pad or at the end of the pen writing on a prescription pad. All pharmaceutical drugs are toxic. They can indeed block certain symptoms for a certain amount of time. It's okay for you to take some drugs for some time to alleviate symptoms. But if you're going to, you cannot stay believing that the drugs will lead to a long-term solution. There absolutely is not a happy ending at the road 
taken through the pharmaceutical method. And you, all it takes is an hour's reading of the group to find somebody that's on some drug, they name it, and it's made them overweight, it's made them this, it's made them that. They see all these things that they don't like because they've been using the drugs. So what Martin is saying is, you know, if you were a high-performance sports car and someone was driving you and the engine light came on, the drug is kind of like taking the chewing gum out and putting it over the light so you, they don't see the light. But the problem is still there. The car still runs. It still wounds. And then one day it stops. And so if you're going to take, if you need to take the drugs and you take the drugs, it's like, okay, this is going to give me something so that I can do something to get over the problem. This is not the something that gets me over the problem. This is the something that allows me to have more energy, to be able to think clear, to maybe not have so much pain. And then you've got to do things like look in your refrigerator. Do you have Coca-Cola and Pepsi in there? Do you have, you know, all this processed food? Do you have wheat uh, products that are high in gluten that you're allergic to? Uh, you know, what sort of perfumes do you use? What sort of, do you smoke? Do you, you know, all of these things, uh, we know are, are contributing to the, the nutritional problems and the toxicity in your body. So another analogy is if your body is an aquarium and you don't clean out the water, what happens to the fish? They don't live a very good life. And so in your body, you basically are an aquarium full of dirty, dirty water and nobody's cleaning it up. Take the drugs, clean out your body, and then and then, and then you won't need the drugs, hopefully, right? Or at least that'll make you, I mean, it'll be a step towards. We're all different. We're all acting toward, differently towards things. You may have cell phone towers and you're really sensitive to them and you're going to have to move, right? I mean, you may have to make some dramatic changes, but what you know is what you've been doing doesn't work and all you're doing is digging your hole deeper and deeper and deeper. And one of my favorite sayings from Martin is when you find yourself in a deep hole, the first thing you do is stop digging. Indeed. So understand it, that the complexity of it is such that if the drugs were working, you would all have been healed by now. You may be getting one side effect or another side effect from a drug. I, I, I read somebody who says, uh, pregabalamin, made me fat or made me crazy or made me this. And another person says, oh, I'm doing so fine on it. And yes, you are doing fine on it and you will probably for a while. But I promise you there will be a moment when that thing will stop working or your toxicity level will rise high enough that will break through and cause you a breakdown. I promise you that would come unless your detoxification capacity is greater. So let's talk about triggers and thresholds. Thresholds are your capacities. How much stuff can you withstand? Trigger is that which pushes against it. If you could visualize it as a bucket and into the bucket we're throwing rocks and in the bucket we have water. If we throw a rock in, some water splashes out, there goes your flare. We need to take those rocks out so that your bucket can hold more water so when it starts raining, you don't overflow. Clear? You need to pay attention here. This is really important. Manage your triggers. Find what they are. They could be food allergies, envi environmental issues, viral infections, emotional injuries, trauma of every sort. You need to deal with each of your individual specific traumatic issues. Those are the triggers. They're yours. Nobody else shares the exact same set. Mine, for instance, was mercury. I had mercury in my teeth installed there by a dentist. It took about three years for me to take from a healthy young man to a wreck that was crawling on all fours from the bed to the washroom because I couldn't walk. Now what? Uh, we have made available resources for you that you can make use of. There are reports that we have written. 
uh, Life Enthusiast is a business that I started 20 years after uh, my original event that made me sick. I am a health coach. I can give you guidance. Life Enthusiast website itself has a lot of information on it that can uh, show you what you need to do. We have products that we have tested on me, my family, and thousands of others that are just like us. We are not selling you some untested stuff. We have uh, tested it and we offer you product guarantee and satisfaction guarantee. You can actually trust it. And I want to add in, too, that we did a seven-day fibromyalgia challenge. And when you look up there at the banner, it says the seven-day fibromyalgia challenge. And you just have to go into the description uh, of the group, and it's there. I'm going to put it into the comments below as well. And start on day one. And we take you through, you know, one day, no flour, no sugar, no salt. And then journal. What happened? We take you through another day where... Uh, you know, we have something else that we just take out of your, uh, out of your, out of your diet if you have it. Try it. See what sort of difference. Now we know that not having sugar and flour and salt for one day is not going to change your life dramatically. But we just want you to see if it makes a small difference. And if it does, keep it out for two days, three days, a week, maybe for the rest of your life. And then that might be one of the things that causes a inflammation in you that causes a flare. Now you've removed it, great. The emotional part is, <laughs> is we know there are, people that, there are people that will remove this from their diet, they, or wheat and gluten, they remove it from their diet, and they say, oh, I feel really good. And what do they do the next day? They gorge themselves on products full of this stuff, and then they have another flare. That's a clue for an emotional, mental, and spiritual trauma that you have to get rid of because you're self-sabotaging yourself. And, but these are just things that you need to become aware of before you can do something about it. And once you say, you know what, every time I eat a, uh, a slice of bread, I have a flare eight hours later. Now you know, and now you can do something. Here's an important point I want to make for you, to you. Nobody other than you is going to save you. It feels perhaps overwhelming, but it's totally up to you to change your life. You don't owe it to you, your kids, your loved one, your partner, your anybody. If you don't fix it for you, it's not going to happen. And you need to, I, I don't know, whatever reason you want to find that's going to motivate you to make a change, do it. Oh, by the way, I can relate to the toxicity that leads to the very dark thoughts. I had been suicidal for a long time. There were great many evenings. I was going to bed, laying down to sleep, thinking, I think I should just end this. And waking up in the morning thinking, I don't think I can take another day of this. I can relate. Been there. Done that. But it's not going to make it better. What's going to make it better is you knowing that if I did it, so can you. Honestly, every one of us can get better. It's totally possible, but you need to understand it's biological individuality, your own situation, your unique triggers. I have the method, I have the guidance, I have the steps for you, and I'm willing to share all of that. And I'm willing to share with you the what works, what doesn't work, and why. And let's do it. Yeah, but you have to do the work. And it comes from self-education. You cannot depend on your doctor. Because 80% of the people that talk about their doctor say, my doctor doesn't believe me. So why are you knocking your head against a brick wall? That's not where the answer is. And the other place where I would suggest that you start is in the seven day challenge and also at the life enthusiast website do a search on fibromyalgia there are lots of articles there and you can call martin and you can talk to him about your individual situation and he can help you move forward i think we've said it if if medicine worked everybody everybody would have been already fixed let me explain 
the pharmaceutical model is not about cure. It's about treatment. They are not interested in making you better. They're interested in keeping you on the pills. Scott, we're done here. Awesome. Thanks for joining us, everybody. This has been the Life Enthusiast Online Radio and TV Network, restoring vitality to you and the planet. We love you all, and we'll talk to you again soon. Bye-bye. <laughs>